Good morning and welcome to the prophetic word of the day. I am Davy Brooks. This is my husband, Chris Brooks. Ciao. And ciao. Happy, is it Monday? Oh, it is Monday. Happy Monday. Hope that you are having a phenomenal Monday. We are having an absolutely incredible Monday. Yeah, but we're not having a phenomenal Monday. We're having an incredible Monday. Because yes, you said, you said, we, are having we a hope you're having a phenomenal Monday. We're having an incredible one, but we're not having a phenomenal no, one. So you got to say that if you want them to have a phenomenal one, then we got to have a Oh mean God, it like that. You know what? I feel like it's Comedy Central every time we jump on here. Like, you're going to just get me with something. That's ever. not true. Within like the first three seconds. Maybe is it is. not? Is, is it true? Is it true? People love to jump on here first thing so that way they can um, see what is it that Chris and Davey are going well, to chit-chat I mean, about. Jumping on is good. Hallelujah. Look at all the people jumping on this morning. Praise the Lord. We're so good to have you. Rachel, Oliver, Shelby, good morning. As Come you're on. jumping Thank on, you, tell Jesus. us hello. Tell us what city, state, and country that you are watching from. Mm. So that way we can be praying for you in your region. We had a phenomenal and incredible Sunday <laughs> yesterday. We went down to Atlanta to jump into revival um, in Marietta, Georgia at worship with wonders with pastors mile and delana rutherford it was awesome we had hey jenny davis hey shelly brown sonia wiley my goodness good i love morning. you and chris so we wiley. jumped in the revival Melanie, with them morning. last night and had a throw down praise you y'all god let me just say this god answers all things amen he answers all things. If he there is answers a, prayers. If there is a Chris question, Wiley. if there is a question that you have for the Father today, if there is something that you are wondering, is the Father going to do it on your behalf? We unite our faith and mix our faith with you Won't to say that yes, God is going to shift things on your behalf. Won't there is a it. shift coming to the body of Christ for those that are surrendered and obedient to him. And we decree with you that there is a shift coming to you personally, your family, your business, your home, your church, and your region. Amen. Whew, I'm just overflowing this morning. Yeah, dude, they're awesome, Chris. They are phenomenal, man. We just, we just love those people down there. Yes, they're incredible. And you know what? I just want to get you to go ahead and share, tag, and comment this. Chris has got a teaching this morning that you are not going to want to miss and that someone that you know needs this teaching. If you're um, ready for the PWOD, go ahead and put it over here. So that I'm ready for the prophetic word of the day. I'm ready to receive everything that the Lord has for me. And I want yes. you to share it, tag it, get it out there to somebody right now. Let them know, say, hey, you need to jump on because we're going to be talking this morning about order or appeal. Yes. Uh, word that the Lord gave me this morning uh, through prayer. So, uh, which is always through prayer. I mean, it's always Hello. that way. So go ahead and say, I'm ready for the PWOD and go to Philemon verse 8 through 9. Philemon 8 through 9. Be reading out of the New American Standard Version. When I see Philemon 8 through 9, jump up there because everybody's ready for the PWOD. Uh, the Schaefer's are on. Come on, Jerry and Jennifer. Let's go ahead and throw it up there and then we are going to release this word this morning. It says this, therefore, though I have enough confidence in Christ to order you to do what is proper, yet for love's sake, I would rather appeal to you since I am such a person as Paul the aged and now also a person, or excuse me, a prisoner of Christ Jesus. When he says a person of Paul um, as aged means he's saying I'm, I'm older in age now. And I'm able to give you some greater wisdom. So Paul is speaking to Philemon here, okay? Paul is speaking to Philemon to the church in Asia about the proper manner of discipleship. And he's given an appeal on how to work with a spiritual son. And the spiritual son here is named Onesimus. Uh, verse 10 through 25, you can go read it on. It gives I know you some, it's a weird name, Onesimus. And you I'm can get some saying. insight here. But... Let's just look at it. He calls this spiritual son. He goes, I know at one time this kid was useless, but now he is useful. I mean, he just, we, we're going to find out that we don't know the full understanding of what happened here, but obviously this guy obviously messed up. Onesimus mm -hmm. did. We know that through reading the scripture that he left 
uh, Asia when he shouldn't have left, but he probably left because of something that he did. Um, the language that we're going to read or that we see here, Paul then says, look, I'm sending him back to you and I know I'm doing it without your consent. <laughs> he goes, I'm, I know you don't want him to come back, but I'm sending him back to you and I want you to do it for me. He says in here and accept him as a part of me. He goes, just as you have partnered with yes. me, I've poured into this young man. I want you to partner with him. And if he's wronged you in any manner and owes you anything, mm -hmm. charge it to me. Mm -hmm. um, so let's listen to how Paul deals here with Philemon, the way that he uh, constructs this conversation. Verse 8 said, says this. He says, now this is Paul speaking to Philemon on behalf of Onesimus and what he wants to have done in that area of Asia. And he says this, he said, I could order you to do something in the name of Christ Jesus due to me being an apostle of Christ ordained by the Holy Spirit. I could order you to do everything that I want you to do with Onesimus. I'm confident enough in who I am, even though I'm in prison. I'm confident in my chains. I'm confident in what I'm doing right now. I walk in the boldness of the apostolic uh, anointing that has been placed upon my life. Um, and how, how did I put this? The bold, Yeah. And I could order you to do what is good and what is proper. Mm -hmm. Yet for love's sake. Yet for love's sake. He shifts this whole thing and says, yet for love, I want to appeal to you. Romans 12, 1 talks about, he says, I urge you. Mm. I appeal to you. I ask you. Yes. Love you. Watch this. He says, I want to love you towards doing what's right. Yes. Too many of us and if this has nothing to do with you, then you can just, you know, let it go. But too many of us have dealt with dictators in the faith instead of true fathers. That's so good, Chris. A dictator is one that demands of something mm -hmm. and demands you to do it his way mm -hmm. and demands you that if you don't do it this way, if you don't say it this way, if you don't look like a carbon copy of me, if you don't dress like I dress, walk like I walk, talk, then you cannot be. That's why a lot of people left organized religion based yeah. upon dictators in pulpits instead of fathers. That's so good. Uh, dictators behind the scene instead of fathers. Dictators that would say, mm -hmm. hey, I'm going to give you a choice, but then turn around and rip you because you didn't do exactly what they said. That's so good. Because they themselves don't know how to do it. And that's a, uh, I think that's just a... Hypocrite? Yeah, it's a little, <laughs> it's a little man syndrome is what it's called. It's a Napoleon syndrome. <laughs> mm -hmm. So true fathers appeal to you with love and they give you liberty, true liberty, to choose. True liberty to choose. Now, if you choose, my, my eyes are watering like crazy. If you choose wrong mm -hmm. and fall, mm -hmm. a true father picks you up. Picks you up. Yes. Dusts you off. Now, watch this. Most people go, oh, he picks me up, and then that's it. No, no, no. He picks you up, dusts you off, and then he says, look. Here's what you did wrong. Yes. I love, see, true love isn't just letting people just go do what they want to do and then not bringing any understanding or any direction or any... Um, the father corrects those he that he corrects, loves. brings true correction. That's because what, what he's going to do is he's going to come to you and say, hey, you know, this is where you messed up. Now, this is what I appealed of you. This is what I gave you an option to choose but yes. because you chose wrong, this is the result of choosing wrong. Yes. That's what true fathership looks like. A mm -hmm. um, father picks you back up and then gets you back on track. Now watch this. If you choose rightly, there mm -hmm. is a reward because Jesus rewards the obedience yes. of his children. Yes. Anybody to say, well, I'm not doing this because of what I'm going to get. Okay. 
good for you and your religious stuff that you say. Um, but the Bible clearly shows that when people of God did what was right, they got rewarded. God rewards them. Yes. You didn't get a participation trophy just because you showed up. And that's the people that get ticked in the church today because they want a participation trophy just because they either showed up to church or they did one day of Bible study and prayer and now they want to receive what everybody else is receiving, those that have given 100% into the things of the kingdom. That's good. So, <laughs> here we are, and Paul's saying, look, you need to do this correctly. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to show you how to do this by my example to you. I could have ordered you, but then I would be like a dictator, throwing you away. You know, most dictators, what they do is when they can't find the perfect specimen, they throw the one away looking for the perfect specimen, but they'll never find that perfect specimen because it doesn't exist. It's a unicorn. All right? Nobody in the Bible was a perfect specimen. Matter of fact, everybody God used were jacked up. Yep. Nearly every single one of them, I don't even know if there's one that wasn't jacked up before they were used in the Bible. And you see God, Jesus using them, the Lord using them mm -hmm. completely. Because they said, look, man, I ran hard enough with a jacked up life. And now that I found true freedom, I'm going to run in this direction and live according to the word of God. And watch the reward and the benefits come to me. Not just because I said a prayer, but because I'm living this thing. Yeah. I love, Joseph Combs just said something that I think is very good. He said, sadly, a lot of people didn't have good earthly fathers. They didn't, they don't know how to accept the good father in heaven and his loving correction. Sure. Because they didn't have a right They also natural... don't know how to accept a spiritual father due to a natural father that didn't do it correctly. Absolutely, same thing. So yeah. it's, it's, that's, that's a lot to do with this. Mm -hmm. But I love how Paul says, look, I could have demanded you. I could have said in the name of Jesus, you do this because of the authority that God has given me as an apostle in your life. But he did not. He said, I want to appeal to you. And I want you to hear my heart. Mm -hmm. I know this guy's jacked up. I know mm -hmm. he has messed up in the past, mm -hmm. but I have worked with him and I am sending him back to you. Now, as just as you have accepted me, I want you to accept him. Now, here's the thing. If he messes up, wow, this is what true fathers do. Yeah. True fathers take full responsibility over sons and daughters. Paul says, if he's wronged you in any matter, I am to blame and I'm the one that's going to make it right. <laughs> excuse me. Amen. God bless you. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Spiritual fathers and mothers take responsibility over their children. God, I love it. See, if, if, if more real moms and dads would take responsibility over their children, we probably would have been having all these stupid riots and all this stuff and people killing each other in, our, in America. Come on now, preach. What do we, what, you want to blame it on the kid? Okay, you can blame it on them. They did it. Mm -hmm. They got to take responsibility, but I also take some, hey, what about your mom and dad? Was there a dad in the home? Yes. Was there a true priest and a true father? Because mm -hmm. with homes with true priests and true fathers, you don't see their kids running around acting like that. And I'm talking about ones that didn't neglect their children for the sake of the gospel, yeah. but those that, because of the appeal of heaven, loved their children towards Jesus, and those kids chose to walk in the things of the Lord, regardless of all the hell that they saw yes. on the outside or on the inside of the church. Yes. Amen? Amen. So it's an appeal to you to live in freedom. It's an appeal to you to walk in holiness and righteousness. Yes. But here's where I really want to get. Not much, not long, but I really want to get here. Who are you pouring into right now that it may look dim, but if you take it from Paul, love is about to conquer all things. <laughs> Oh, yes. I mean, you read this, read Philemon. It's all about onesimus and what this did, dude did. It's, it's literally nearly half the 25 verses 
is about, hey, I know what this guy did. I know how he jacked up. And he came back to me. He left y'all when he shouldn't have. He didn't do it correctly. Mm -hmm. But I have worked with him from prison. Yes. I'm sending him back to you. I'm asking you to give this dude another shot. Love him the way I love you. Mm. Help him. Jesus. He's coming wow. with a word from me. Appealing to you to do, to love, cool. to conquer. I want you to remove something from your vocabulary. Huh. I'm done with them. Remove yes. it from your vocabulary. You're never done even if they run off. You're never done even if they run off. You, it, true fathers stand there waiting on them to walk back in the house. Yes. True fathers and mothers stand there waiting on them to walk back in the house and say, all right, you did yes. this. The appeal is not to onesimus. The appeal is to the body to receive yes. him. You know, you just said something that you've got to remove from your voc that people have to remove from their vocabulary. I'm done with them. The reality is, is if God is never done with us, then we and be we done are with supposed them. to be a reflection of Him, we then we're not supposed to be done with, with someone them else at all. Because if you say that you're done with someone, then that means the love of the Father is not really in you. Sometimes, sometimes we write people off for the smallest thing. Mm -hmm. Because what may look big to us is really small to God. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Or what it is, is that we have put a limit upon our discipleship. And yes. we say, if you cross this limit, I'm no longer discipling you. Yes. Well, they didn't do that. The only way that the, the apostles didn't disciple somebody is if they took off and never came back. And then the scripture says, if they left us, they were never of us to begin with. Okay? You know, I'm, I'm reminded, the body of Christ, the reflection of the kingdom is supposed to be family. Mm -hmm. It is not supposed to be one and done and I'm through with you and you never get another chance and, and I'm not going to pour into you or, or be friends with you. Now, again, I'm not talking about toxic situations or abusive situations. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about just the people of mm -hmm. God that get impatient and say, no, I don't have time for this. Mm -hmm. But yet we have time for so many things that are temporal. You know, we as the body of Christ, if we would quit focusing on the temporal things and started focusing on the eternal things, we could see the kingdom of God made manifest across America and across the nations like never Come before on, to Jesus. see an awakening and a revival to cross this globe. But so often we're such a temporal people that are so just engrafted with, with selfishness for, for the things that make us feel good or the things that we want instead of killing our flesh and focusing on those mm -hmm. eternal things. Well, here, here's the, here's the, Shoo. the full key this morning. Oh, Stop commanding. Jesus. Stop commanding those you're discipling. Start appealing and showing love that conquers all that sin. Yes. Say, son, this is what you need to do. Daughter, this is what you need to do. This is yes. what's going to help you. Yes. This is the word. This is what I'm giving you to bring success. This is what I am appealing to you in yes. order for you to live a holy and righteous lifestyle, to receive the rewards on earth as it is in heaven. I want to give this to you right now. And I love the scripture where Paul turns and he says, instead of commanding you, Philemon and all of y'all, I would rather appeal to you. Wow. I'd rather appeal to you in love because I know you'll choose to do the right thing. And I also, I also want to say this. 
It's worth it, the seeds that you sow into discipleship. The people that God's put in front of you, for you to love them to Jesus, it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth now, it. Now think about it. If they're, if they're in front of you, that means that God brought them to you. And there's an assignment from heaven on your Ooh. life. And the assignment of heaven on your life is to love them the same way Christ loves them. Well, and I'm thinking of an individual that called us yesterday that we have not talked to. Oh, my Jesus. In probably... Two years. About two years. Um, that that our, our, he ended up having to go to Africa. He did all these different things. He is um, he is seven months away from being a... 40 bona, days. 40 days, my bad. 40 days away from being a bona fide brain surgeon. So he's been a little busy, one of our spiritual sons. Yeah. And... He called us yesterday on his birthday. On his birthday. To reconnect to with us. To ask us how we're doing. And for us to, to reconnect, we've got a lunch that we're going to do in the next couple of weeks. And, and I'm just sitting here and I'm being reminded of so many times when it's worth it to pour into the people that God's put in front of you. Amen. They may only be there for a season, but they may be there for life. Amen. And they may be those people that God's connecting you to for kingdom assignments years down the road. You don't know what it is that God has set in course. You don't know the providence of those assignments. So I pray that you would take those assignments, Come the on. people of God that he has put before you, I pray that you take it serious. Serious. Take it serious. And those lives matter. All right. Tell them how to get connected. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Ooh. I just got overwhelmed with the goodness I'll of do God. Whew, sorry. Go to chrisbrooksministries.com, get connect, connected. Get connected with everything that we got going on. I just pinned the website. Davey just there. pinned it up there. If you haven't, become a, if you haven't become a monthly partner yet, why not? I don't understand. Uh, <laughs> when you partner with this ministry, there's so many people on here that can tell you how the Lord will bless you uh, because this is fertile soil. Wherever we go, we are declaring revival. We are declaring uh, the anointing of God. We are declaring that souls are saved, which they are. Lives are changed. People are getting healed, set free, and delivered. Uh, we're ministering yes. on a daily basis here on the PWOD, declaring directly over you. So what do I need to give? Whatever yes. the Holy Spirit puts yes. upon your heart. Go sow, sow seed, and reap. If you don't sow, you don't reap. Amen? This isn't I, your tithe. Your tithe goes yeah. to your church. What are we going to say? Well, I just, I want to say this. What is the PWOD? The PWOD is personal discipleship daily. That's it. This is discipleship. Personal discipleship daily. daily. That the partners that join with this ministry are able to help supply free to the public, Amen. free to those that cannot sow at this part, at this, at this time, at this, but point. The, at this point, but those of you that partner, there's so many of you that watch that are partners with us. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Because of your support and prayers, we are able to present free Bible studies, free personal discipleship, every single day, Monday through Friday. Mm. And we cannot do this without you. Praise God. We are so thankful for your prayers and support. What are you watching, baby? I missed it. You missed what? I was going to drag more trash out there for the trash man. Well, you just, you stared for like the last 40 seconds. I know, the trash but I, wasn't, I didn't want to just jump and leave, but that's what I was trying to do because I saw him go by, but I didn't know he was going to be that quick. I mean, he flew up there and back. He did fly. Bless it. I did not know that he had passed by. Yeah, I got I all that trash up something different. Well, no, it's just recycle. It's not trash. It's recycle boxes that we need to break down in our garage because <laughs> Amazon is good to us. Amazon's good to us. They're cracking me up. I love you guys. Share, tag, and comment this word. There is someone that either you are discipling now or going to disciple later or someone that you know that is discipling someone and needs this word so they know how to train up Amen. people correctly. May the Lord bless you keep you. May his face shine upon you for you are blessed in the field and in the city. Everywhere you go and everything you do, this is the day that the Lord's made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. We glorify God. We honor him. We declare greatness. We declare right now that you will prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Yes. No plague, no pestilence, no tragedy shall come against you. The blessing of the Lord is with you. In yes. the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. Remember this always. If it doesn't challenge you, it won't change you. Amen. Be Bye. blessed, y'all. See you tomorrow.